Hi, my name is Stacy. I'm with Hex Inverter Electronics, and today I'm going to be demoing Orbitals for you. Orbitals is a dual 8-step sequencer or a single 16-step sequencer. It's primary, primarily linear, so that means that it has programming modes that mimic those of the early sequencers made by companies like Moog, in the 70s, um, uh, but it also offers some newer features like bipolar voltage output and three modes that are kind of more abstract and um, characteristic of modern um, modulars and the Eurorack modular format, and those are voltage control. So you can actually select the step that the sequencer is on via voltage control and that can make for some really in interesting patterns. So I'm going to just kind of go through some of the features here and show you a couple of patches. By no means are they going to be super musical or anything, it's more to just show you how the sequencer works in case you're interested in building or buying one. This sequencer is currently available as a kit product from hexinverter.net. You can buy it direct from me and it will be available as a Eurorack module this summer. Alright, so I'm going to bring in a baseline I have programmed in. So, pretty basic 8-step analog baseline, and it's running on sequencer 8. Orbitals can operate in dual sequencer mode, so it can actually be two 8-step sequences, or it can be one 16-step sequence depending on the length setting of sequence array. The minute that you go over 8 steps, it automatically goes into 16 step mode, as you can see. So, turning it back to 8, we can hit the reset button, and reset both sequencers. In case you didn't notice there, the sequencer resets to step 0, which is an imaginary step. It doesn't actually exist. But the next step that plays is the first step. Orbitals is actually a bipolar sequencer, so it can have bipolar voltage output by turning on bipolar mode. So I've turned off sequencer B just for clarity, so pay attention to the top sequence here. Orbitals has six modes of operation. Right now it's acting in forwards mode. There's also reverse, pendulum, and yes, the sequence length is fully variable in pendulum mode. So for example, you can have a 16-step pendulum sequence, as seen here, and you can also shorten it like that. So those are the three standard modes Orbitals offers. There are also three more sort of abstract sequencing modes. One of them is random. This is random mode. It's great for making pseudo-random hi-hat sequences and that kind of thing, because you can turn certain gates on, and then there's just a chance of it hitting those spots, and you still get to pick the pitch or the CV setting for each step, so it's random, except you have control of the steps that it can select from, so actually you can get some cool rhythmic patterns out of it when using it for percussion modules and other things like that. So, what's really unique about orbitals is it has voltage address step modes, so as you can see, the reset input here actually also functions as the CV input because the reset's practically useless in this mode. Over to the left here, I have a function operating on Galilean moons. So it's essentially a low frequency oscillator right now. I'm going to take that envelope and plug it to the CV input. And now you can see the step, which is playing is being selected by this LFO over here.
The shape of this LFO right now is basically a triangle waveform. So, or sorry, it's a steep slope. So it's going up and then back very quickly. So in this mode, in CV mode here, this is the normal voltage address step mode. And so each time it changes over to the next step, you'll see it will create a new gate each time the voltage changes enough, all on its own. However, there's also another mode called clocked mode, where the clock, whether internal or at the clock input, works like a sample and hold, so it will only create a new gate when a clock arrives. So we can change the speed of this. Even though the CV isn't changing, we're creating new gates if it's staying in one place. So these are subtle but fairly different modes of operation available to you. In regular modes, like forward mode, which is playing right now, plugging a reset signal with a logic high into the reset input resets the sequencer until it goes low again. High, low. If the run button isn't activated, as you can see, you can turn each sequencer on and off individually, and you plug a run signal into the run input, the sequencer runs while the signal's high and stops when it's low. You can plug an external transport control into this to control your sequencer externally. With this one sequencer, I'm actually creating a bass line, drums on the bottom, and I'm using the clock output to make some 16th note hi-hats. So I'll bring those in. So with every clock pulse coming out of this clock out jack, there's a hi-hat playing. This CV line on sequencer B is plugged into the decay amount for the hi-hats. So if you can look at the knob positions, the hi-hat length is actually being determined by this. So because of the dual sequencer mode on orbitals, you can do quite a lot with just one module. Orbitals conveniently offers a transpose input for sequencer A. I don't have a keyboard with CV output here, otherwise I could plug that in and play the sequence with the keyboard. I've got an LFO signal here. Which is coming from Galilean Moons here. As you can hear, it's transposing the entire baseline sequence at once. So this is really just a built-in DC mixer, but it saves you a module when you're creating playable sequence patches with a keyboard or other modulation source like this. All right, so I got pretty bored of that baseline there. So I'm just gonna walk you through how to program a basic sequence in orbitals and how sequences are entered in. Uh, demonstrating with some mutant drums modules up up above. So, on the bottom here, I'm programming a bass drum. So, to turn on a gate for that step, you just push the button in. So now we have a pattern happening on these steps. I've already programmed a sequence into this gate sequencer, and that's controlling an open hi-hat. The open hi-hat decay is actually voltage controllable, so I've got the CV output of this second sequencer here, this row of knobs controlling the decay of that hi-hat. Something I like to do to use the sequencer to its fullest potential, like I've shown earlier, is to use the clock output. For
for 16th note closed hi-hats. So we've also got some of that. So as you can see, it's fairly functional just with one sequencer for programming patterns and playing them. 